Hello, everybody. I'm Spectacular, the Silver Stack. I'm here with Coin Guy at his real coin shop in Spring Hill, Florida. Coin Guy, what I want to talk to you today is about coin collecting strategy. And I figured you were the guy to talk to about that. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. How's it going? It's been good. It was good. They didn't call my name at the Emmys yesterday, but that's okay. I understand. That's all right. Um, Next time. Strategy for coin collecting. Is there such a thing? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you have to look at what's happening in the world. You have to think about how do you feel? Do you feel safe? Or what do you like to collect? Are you collecting for rarity, historic value, or just because you're afraid and you want to have gold and silver. And every, any one of those is a legitimate reason, or all of them are a legitimate reason. And I get people who cover all those bases when they collect. Uh, I had a new collector, I had two new people in on Friday, Saturday last week who knew nothing about silver. And the first thing they asked me is about things they see on TV and about the prices they see. And sometimes you gotta be really careful. If it's too good to be true, it usually is. It's those fake things you say. And then you get the people want to know the difference between 999, 90%, uh, the same thing with gold bullion, gold coins, silver bullion, silver coins. And your strategy should be, what do you have in discretionary income? You don't want to bet the house on anything, but you want to cover all the bases. You need to be diversified in what I think is coming and what people see out there. Um, that's that's just how strategy works. You know, you wanna protect yourself, you wanna have some silver to fall back on. Uh, do you buy 90%? Do you buy 999? It's whatever you're comfortable with. How much you wanna spend. Rule of thumb is 10 to 20% of your assets. And I've always thought that that was a good idea. Um, you know, look at things throughout the world where suddenly your country's at war and you gotta run. Well, you better run with 20 pounds of gold rather than 500 pounds of silver. Things like that, that's what you're fearful for. And then there are those who collect because they love the history. We sold a lot of coins, historic coins, a lot of foreign coins, because parents, grandparents were at home teaching their children geography or heritage and where they came from. And they do it through coinage. Um, it's that, you know, that's an angle that people do. Could a strategy behind collecting coins simply be just, man, my eye really digs that piece or that piece, of course. and I'm just going to collect those? Yeah, beautiful coins will always jump out. Some people like, I like $10 gold pieces. I like $3 gold pieces, the princesses. I just like them because they're not, they're, they're, they're more money than the average gold coin, but they're cooler too. And uh, they've always been attracted to me, and I, and I put those away. Um, when you say more money than the average gold coin, are you talking about numismatic value? Uh, no, I'm talking about even basic value. A $10 Indian is always going to be more money than a $10 Liberty, except unless it's a rarer date. If you look apples to apples as far as common dates, Indians just sell better. They always are more desirable than Liberties. Gotcha. Um, it's, just, it's just what it is. Some things are just very... Walking Liberties are beautiful. Um, you know, just the... the the image that's on the $20 gold piece or the walker. Um, now, some people call it a strategy. They like raw coins. They want just the coin out of a, a slab like these right here. Yep. Some people, on the other hand, they like the slab coins. They like the grading service well, to tell them take, what they got. You take something like this. I had this in the case raw for, for months. Okay, I was showing that raw for months. And nobody, nobody took it. Uh, nobody's taken it yet, but I decided to send it in to be certified because this is the kind of coin that qualifies certifying. I think it's a beautiful coin. It's cool. It's 2,400 years old. Uh, this is Pegasus, and this is Athena on the other side, Greek goddess. Uh, I had picked up one recently from a customer that had the owl in the background, and I kept that because I'm an owl person. Uh, that was slightly higher grade than this. May I touch this one? Sure. Now, this coin right here, so you had it raw at one point, mm -hmm. and 
the value or the price? It was half the price of that. Half the price, and it was in your showcase. Yep. And now that you've had it graded, we can put a higher now, price. Now, exactly, and I got the grade on it, and because it's got, it's got the, you know, the provenance, whatever you want to call it. It's in the case. You don't got to worry about it. You know, I had one grader look at this from a grading company, not as famous as other grading companies, and he wasn't sure it was real. Well, I said, well, you know, once again, coin grading is subjective. And I said, um, I disagree with you. And I took it to a couple of ancient guys, and they both, oh, I want this. How much is it? Well, that tells me the guys who handle ancients every day had no question about the fact that it's real. So I sent it into NGC, and lo and behold. Now, you look at something like this, and you've seen this coin before. That's a big one. And look who's on it. I don't want to mention the queen. No. Don't she matter how much it costs, the queen is on it. Yeah. This costs the same money to certify. And we just lost the queen the other day. Yep. Yep. This costs the same money to certify. Approximately how much to certify? $75. Each of these costs Each. 75 because they were sent... They went as one item. So no matter how big it is, may I touch it? Well, there's bigger ones holders than that. That's wild, man. That thing's huge. Yeah. So, but strategy-wise, um, the raw coin, maybe collecting raw coins, might be a good idea because you get a cheaper price. It may be, but you don't get this. You don't always get the same peace of mind as you do when you're buying a coin that's certified, especially when it is a type coin or especially when it's a key day. I remember back in the early 80s, in the mid 80s, when they were first coming out with the slab coins. Now you're talking at a time when I'm 30 years old, 31 years old, I'm a young man. Still. What are you now, about 40 when now? Yeah, you know, a little more. Um, but anyway, the old timers said, this is never gonna last. And I remember that clearly. This is a fact. This is like an 85, 87, never last. Nobody's gonna wanna do this. They want their coins in their hands. Well, time has proven them wrong. And many of those dealers are gone now. But uh, obviously, I think grading is here to stay. But it gives you that peace of mind. And what it's good for, too, and I've had that where people will buy certified coins because they've gotten bad news. Or in their collection, they'll sell off part of it. And they want the certified coin for their inheritance. They don't got to worry. Nobody's going to, you know, shine them on or try and rip them off. Right. The plastic is going to help you certify the coin or give them the peace of mind. Um, but people collect for all those reasons. You know, if you're buying a rare, a rare coin, like if you're picking up, um, I have somebody who's picking up this coin because I just felt I needed to send it in. A rare coin? Well, a famous coin. 1922, no D, okay. Yep. What's now, that? that was raw. I sold it raw, and I had somebody question it, and I said, you know what, I'm going to send it. I didn't charge the person anything extra for it. I sent it in. He's got to pay me this week, next week, whatever, and he waited on it. They came back, and it's the real deal. The real deal. Now, that's a coin that they were counterfeiting in the 60s. The same with the 09 SVDB. I mean, when you got coins that are five, seven, a thousand, two thousand dollars, sometimes you want peace of mind. Now, I wouldn't recommend buying this, breaking it out, and putting it in your penny collection. Leave it like this. Yeah. Keep it in it. It's peace of mind for the next generation or whatever it is. But you want, you know, you want it in something like that. And sometimes it's only just about that, you know. Now that's that's a rarity. That's let's, a rarity. Let's, let's call it that. Now some people, a strategy, um, they collect just as much as they can, right? They okay. collect just bunch of pennies, bunch of cents. They got bags of these things. They want mass. Some people collect just one or two coins that are very rare, very valuable, and that's what they want. They want just a small amount of coins, but very high value. And that's absolutely, that's like people... I would rather, some people would rather have the Bentley that's 350000 than four other cars or one electric power car. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's that kind of a thing, too. Um, there are always going to be people that can afford anything. And if you look at the prices of coins, 
they just keep moving forward. I'm not going to call them all works of art, even though when you look at a lot of Greek coins, and ancient people will tell you this, ancient dealers, they, they were works of art. They're three-dimensional. A lot of Roman coins are much flatter. The Greek coins tend to be dimensional, and you can see, you know, see the work of art in them. There's a bust to the whole thing, a face, a depth. Um, some people will always go after the unattainable because they want that coin that's a million dollars, or they want bragging rights. Yeah. I personally, I could see both ways, and I understand both ways. What's really cool about some of those really, really high dollar coins is that it follows the person. So, like, you know, it passes to Coin Guy, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. Coin Guy has touched that coin, mm -hmm. and then somebody else has it. And that, that history, you know, you can track that. Exactly. Who's held that coin? Kings and, have held certain coins. Oh, well, the Farouk uh, $20 gold piece is famous. Yeah. Did it just resell for almost $20 million? The 1933 St. Gordon. How crazy is that? 20 million. Sure. And again, people paid 100 million for a painting that's 500 years old. That's cool, too. It's teach their own what, you know, the rarity is the big thing. How many are, if, if there were so many of them, nobody would be after them. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, as far it, as, because um, you are not only a coin shop owner, dealer, you are also a collector, too. I've been a collector since I'm 10. Right. Now, for you, with those, with that strategy in mind, either the collecting in mass or the collecting like smaller amounts of valuable coins, what, what more are you into? When I, I've gone through all the phases. As a younger man, I used to collect just to collect it and I didn't sell any. Uh, through my late mid-teens, I was putting silver away that I got in my paper route. Then when I got a full-time job, I started actually buying coins with the eye to flip it when I was in my 17, 18, 19. But I was still collecting. And I wasn't thinking about collecting to have a hoard of silver and gold. It was about putting sets together. One of the first sets I put together was the Walk in Liberty Half Dollars. Um, I just enjoyed the walkers. I thought they were beautiful. And at that time, it wasn't about... The world was a different... The world was different than it is now. You collected for the pleasure... When you had the first big run of silver back in 1980, and there are many people out there who remember when silver hit $50 an ounce. Think about the cost of living back in 1980 or in 79, but 1980. Then when you look at what $50 for an ounce of silver was then and what $50 is now, that, that'd be like $250 an ounce. For, it was an, incredible. And that's when I first started seeing people buying silver to hoard it, to try and play it. But the whole market only lasted about six months from, from the high to the low of it, or just about the low of it. Um, coin shows were, they were kinetic. You'd walk in there and dealers would have piles of money telling you they're ready to play. And, you know, it wasn't unusual to see $10,000 change hands, you know, because gold was 800 an ounce, silver was 50. Which, think about it, that's a ratio of 16 to 1. What's the ratio now? About 95? It's up there. What's, it's, it's incredible. You know, I'm looking at 1950 compared to 17. It's probably, it's probably around 90 to 1. So if you're looking at 1700 divided by... What is it, 1734? 19, that's, that's silver? No, yeah. This is, a, this, is, this is gold. Oh, I see. I put a dot there because I do things like that. 87 to 1. 87 to 1. It was 95 one day last week. Yes, it was. Uh, but today's just been that kind of a crazy day, silver up, silver down. But you play the long game. You know, you play it because you're fearful. Like I tell people, you don't bet the bank. I told this woman she wanted to invest $1,000 in silver. And if you want, you know, much more than that, you maybe want it. I've had people bring in silver because they're afraid of things to come. And they can't run away with 200 pounds of silver. They want a few one-ounce gold coins. Right. So that's part of a strategy, too. And then it's the love of collecting. People love ancients. People collect tokens. Just like people... Somebody paid $12 million for a Mickey Mantle card, I think, last week. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow. Cardboard. I remember having a Mickey Mantle when I was a kid flipping cards in the schoolyard. 
And I had Mantle. This would be in the mid '60s, and I wasn't a baseball card collector. I was a coin collector. Yeah. You know, I do all that stuff off the sliding pong in the park. I had two thousand cards when I was like thirteen, and I just threw oh. them out to all, all the little kids running around grabbing them. Where'd you Who throw knows them? At? How much I threw? Where'd you throw them? At? We're that gonna go in, look right now. That was in Flushing. That um, was in Flushing. Okay, so you mentioned silver and gold. Um, I personally, as far as a collector goes, my strategy has been big on silver and gold coins because I feel like it has like a couple of different outs that way. You got the numismatic and then you got the precious metals in case, you know, the numismatic falls through or vice versa. And that's what I was explaining to the woman too. I said, we realize that when you buy a silver round, 999, depending where your psyche or how you feel the world is headed, when you buy a 999, and you give me $1,000 and you buy 50 or whatever you buy. If you buy 2,000, here's $100, you know, there's 100 pieces. It doesn't, I don't need to know your name, I don't know who you are. But if you sell me one of these 999 silver rounds back, I need your fingerprint, a copy of your license, and a signature. Think about that. But when you buy a silver dollar, when you buy silver dollars, or even if you buy foreign silver, I don't have to have anything. When you sell me any of that, I don't need anything because it's got monetary value. But silver rounds, gold bars, silver bars are looked at as jewelry, and they, they trace it. And if you're worried about Big Brother, it's something I think you think you have to think about. There's high premiums on Eagles. There's no question about it. There's premiums on everything, but not as high. There's much less premium on silver rounds or silver bars as compared to a gold eagle or a silver eagle. Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's in there. So you got to think, do you think Big Brother's coming for you? Well, then you don't want to put your name to all of that, you know, when you go to sell it. This um, Morgan Dollar right here, can, mm -hmm. I, can I borrow sure. that just for a second? And I want to walk over here to a different part of your store just for a moment. I'm going to touch it just on the on the sides here. But this is just a regular Morgan dollar. Not too special as far as value goes, right? Yeah. Pretty plain Jane. And then you have a case right here of better Morgan dollars. Is that right? A recent purchase. So is there a strategy maybe to buying these right here versus these? Well, these you're buying in volume. These right here. This is a quantity thing. Okay. They have a lot of character. They're really cool. They're easy to move. Uh, I get these and I have rolls of extra fines and I have rolls of AUs and unks. This is part of a collection I bought just yesterday. Um, I've got a lot of uh, GSAs right now. Um, and these are new ones that just came in. All of this is new. Most of this is new. These are new. I guess I should mention to everybody too that might not be familiar with you and your shop that I do put your information down in the description of the videos down below. Um, and you can check out Coin Guy's other videos uh, through those descriptions too. Because I think we've done like about 50 videos together. Oh yeah, over 50. Yeah, sure. it's getting crazy now. I mean, wow. <laughs> when you buy things like this, you've got to be careful. Now I do my due diligence, but yesterday was a crazy busy day. And when you're looking at a Morgan Dollar collection, you're looking at 90 coins. There's probably two dozen at least that need to be scrutinized. These not so much because they're already certified. These were part of it. They're already certified. Uh, but you look at this coin. This coin is $1,000. Wow. I mean, if it was slightly better, it's $1,500. This is, this is a VF3530. Mm -hmm. In an XF, it's 14 That would be an XF40. It's 1400 Help all collectors real quick, all levels. This one right here says 64 so it's a higher grade mm -hmm. this one says 30 two different prices the higher grade is actually a lower price help people that are new rarity how many were made this has a much it's a combination combination of how many were made and then how many survived you've got this this is 1895 they had the panic you know we've seen the depression of 1929 there have been depressions throughout history you had a depression in the 1830s the depression in the 1870s uh, you had a gold depression in the 1850s uh, where brought on the Civil War. Um, and then you had another depression in the 90s where the price of silver was, 
there were agents from England and Spain and Germany here who were buying the silver dollars directly to, from the mint because they were already smelted and they were worth a few pennies more in silver than the silver in them. And they were sucking them all up. That's why you get like the 95, because you can't get a 95P. You can get it only in proof. They made what, 880, maybe there's 600 exist. That's a, the only 95 you can get. Because business strikes, it says 12,000. I've never heard of or seen an actual business strike. The only ones you can get are proofs. Because depending where you were, they got sucked up. That's why the 93s, all the 1893s, some of the 94s harder than others, and the 95s, a lot of them got sucked up and shipped to Germany and England and whoever was waiting on the docks. And that's, that's why you have a shortage thing. Now in 1903, oh, that's another big deal story. Uh, there, was a, there was a time in 1960, if you get one of the 60 red books or blue books, they will show this coin and uncirculated for forty dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. just to give you an idea, the eighteen ninety five dollar right now, an average junk is probably fifty thousand. In the blue book, it was twenty bucks then. This coin listed for twice the price. The O three O listed for twice the price as the ninety five proof. Wow. Why? Well, I believe it was, somebody will check me out, but in 1962, 63, whatever it was, they found in the back of some vault like 15,000 of them in the back. And this could have very easily come from there because it's mint stick. So you get people who lost their shirt. These were coins that were routinely selling for, actually even in the early 60s, it was selling for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And suddenly the, it all went pop. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a true story. Yeah, wow. You know, you, you look at what people have asked me, why are bust quarters so much more money than bust half dollars? Because quarters were used every day. Half dollars were held back to back up paper money. And there were bags and bags, especially during the Depression, when they went to some of these old banks that went pop. Once again, you had these canvas banks, bags back in the back of the bank, full of bust the half dollars. Uncirculated, beautiful stuff, incredible stuff. Just a matter of opportunity. So to find a quarter in better conditions, much more rare. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bust quarters are much, even that goes for all the bust coinage, even the dollars. But the halves are very plentiful, and there, there's quite a few of them out there. Now, strategy, right? When it comes to coin collecting, somebody new comes in and says, you know, hey, uh, coin guy, I watched your videos. I, I want to try to be a coin collector a little bit. You know, I like Morgan dollars. Do, do you recommend going to something like this, like mass amounts of, you know, cheaper Morgan dollars or something graded like this, a little bit more expensive, Carson City? It, what is their psyche? If you're buying coins, and I get this coming in the next month or two, I'll get where I'm putting them in all the grandkids' stockings. Then you're buying this. You're not buying 1895 S's to throw in the stocking. Not the kid's going to break it out and buy an ice cream ball with it. <laughs> you give them Morgan dollars. You want to give them Morgan dollars or, or Silver Eagles or whatever. Give, go for the quantity. You, it's cool, and you put it in all their stockings. And I have regulars who've come in for years who come in and buy 20 and 30 of them because they put four or five in each one of the grandkids' stockings. And that's a cool thing. But if you want to be more serious, then have you're a, buying this. Okay, I got you. And if you're going to buy, you know, you really got to be careful because, like I said, when you're going through, you do the best you can. Now, I got burned on these. This is part of that collection. Okay. You got burned on these ones? Yeah. Look at the three. Let me see. Let me zoom way in on it. Oh, that's all scratched up, man. Yeah. That's no good. So it was an eight, maybe? Maybe an eight. Some, some jeweler who was a bit of a mechanic... Uh, you know, you're looking at, you're going through all these coins, there's time involved. And this one, this is a famous coin. This has a very low mintage, the 94. Is it 100 or 110,000, something like that. But I believe, after I buy it and I'm at home at my desk looking, I realize that there's some funny business right underneath that bow yeah. on the back. I said I can't sell this as a plane. Then I put it under the microscope, and I'm looking, and it, there's something there. And I'm, you know, like I said, that's like sometimes you hit home runs, 
And sometimes you've got to pad something you're buying because some things get past you. They just, it, it's the nature of the beast. It's the game we play. I so, mean, this one I spotted in there and I just passed right over it. I knew it was a fake. That's a $90 coin. The 99 is a little bit better, but I didn't get burned on that because I didn't count it. So this is not a real one? No, that's no good. It only weighs 21 grams and Morgan dollars weigh 26.7. I didn't pull that out to weigh it. I just looked at it and knew it was no good. The other ones were much more deceptive. Uh, the one you really needed a microscope and the three just got past me on the night. But the 93s are all hard. But I got new ones over there too. So strategy, you know, when you're collecting coins could be do your homework, um, find somebody that knows what they're doing so they can get you real, Look, real I coins, can, right? I'll be honest with you. If I put this out, out of shelf, I can sell this nine out of ten times. No question. It's really, you got to really know what you're doing. Yeah. And because there's doubt in my mind, and I, I will probably take it to get second opinions, but I'm pretty, this one there's no doubt. But this one I'm pretty sure that I missed it. So you're an honest coin dealer, though. I mean, you just don't want to try to pass that off as whatever no, it could be. And there are many who would. Yeah. I sure. mean, uh... <laughs> There's many that would. I just don't need to do that either. It's just your reputation's important. But I got plenty of CCs. I've got this. And I, I love collecting. I love the history of it. I told you some of those uh, cards, some of the letters I got. Uh, I just got a whole packet of letters, and I haven't had a chance to read it. Yesterday was a madhouse. I think it came yesterday morning from those high school kids that I did the Great American Teaching last, uh, actually, I think it was in May. So I got your letters, and I will be looking at them, and we'll bring it up in the future. It's very cool. So, in um, New Jersey, <clears throat> New Jersey, all different types of coins here. This a lot of stuff that you have in your store is like United States coins, right? Which is yeah. a strategy. Some people, you know, they wanted to stick with you know their country, whatever that happens to be. That whoever's watching you from wherever. But then you have the foreign. I mean, right now I'm getting people knocking down the door about coins with the queen on it. Uh, from, I got one guy who's coming back tomorrow. I sold the heck out of all of those uh, uh, Winston Churchill, the big 10 or 30 pences, uh, the ones with the queen on the back, this stuff. I got more for them. Sure. Yeah, these. I know I had them somewhere. Here's a whole, be here's a whole bag of, of Churchills. He's got the queen on there and Winston Churchill. He wants as many as I can give him. I got about another 50 here. Wow. So, well, I, you know, I went through different boxes. And sometimes, you know, it's like I'm a pack rat with some of this stuff. It's like when I, you know, when the kids were going through the place and looking around when things look bleak for me. And they said, Dad, what were we going to do with all of this? I said, not my problem. <laughs> so that's that person's strategy. They're trying to get into these right now. And... Let's say that your strategy is getting uh, as much silver coinage as possible, or your strategy is getting as much uh, old, you know, half cents, uh, foreign coins. It's not wrong, no matter what your strategy is. Oh, no, is. no, it's what you, what you desire, what you enjoy. Uh, foreign coins are heritage, usually. I, as I said, because of the Wuhan virus, we sold a lot of foreign coins all over the country because grandparents were at home teaching their grandchildren. Yeah. And they wanted 200, 300, and we sent out packages everywhere, uh, 500, whatever it may have been. Um, it just, you know, it's whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But any, any new person, I also told them to buy constitutional silver, what they call junk silver. Uh, constitutional. You need to have dimes and quarters and half dollars. It's the easiest to understand. And I don't, I don't think we're going to have a Thunderdome situation, but you never know. But the point I'm saying is don't jump in and buy a thousand ounce bar or even a hundred ounce bars for an advanced collector. I mean, a hundred ounce bar, somebody's got a thousand other ounces in smaller denominations. If you need to go to, to neighbor or somebody and trade them, you know, three ounces of silver or 10 ounce, five ounces of silver for a new battery, for your car or something, you don't want a hundred ounce bar to do it. You need to have something that's practical. So you need all forms of silver. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, with uh, paper money, like, is there any kind of strategy there? Um, paper money is is colorful. 
people like it. Um, they collect all kinds of paper money. I have just a little bit here. Is it the same kind of concept that? No, it's not. You're not buying this because you're going to trade it for gold and silver in the future. You buy it because it has history. These are Confederates. This is just a check I had gotten years and years ago. 1880, a $10,000 check from 1880. Pretty wild. That's incredible. It's got to be a lot of money you then. You buy half of Brooklyn for that. Yeah. I mean, it's just a tremendous amount of money in those days. Um, you know, there's Confederates, fractional, there's all kinds. There's, there's some, this is cool stuff. And speaking of paper money, I was walking through the flea market the other day. And I, uh, I had to go pick up my honey. Because I take honey and tea every morning. That's, oh, I thought you meant like your wife. No, my Not wife was at church. Different honey. She was representing me at church. Okay. But she was, uh, I was at church and I went over to, uh, I went over to the, uh, to the flea market. And uh, I pick up a gallon of honey about every four months. Now, let's talk about inflation. A year ago, I'm picking up a gallon of honey for $50. Now the guy wanted $68. He's slowly gone up to 55, 60, 68. Did the bees go on strike? What cost of living did the bees have that it went up 40%? Well, guy, I think bees are becoming in danger, aren't they? Well, maybe so, but they're still producing, there's plenty of gallons of honey there for sale. <laughs> it's just what, and I've had people say the same thing. I understand legitimate increases in things, but some people I think are taking advantage of the number. To make a long story short, I got it for 60 bucks because that's who I am. But, uh, you know, it was $50 a year ago, now it's 68. That's almost 40%, that's pretty steep. Yeah. But I was in the flea market and there was other dealers there. What is this? And they had paper money. This is silver certificates. Oh, I love those. These are not rare. Can I get grabby real Go quick? Ahead. <coughs> These are not rare, There's but they're old. Of, they're cool. They're interesting. They're pretty. They're part of a bygone time, maybe a better time, a simpler time. Um, there's a hundred in a package, and they mix some star notes. Um, you know, but you go to a flea market, you got to be careful because they'll sell these things for six ninety nine. And I sell these for one hundred and eighty dollars for a hundred of them. One eighty for one hundred. You're saying six ninety nine for each one. Each one. Oh wow! And then when you get the better ones, they're asking nine and ten dollars for stuff like this, which is this is this is the same as this. And these are just so these common. Are you're saying smaller packs, yeah. So you get stuff like this, you're going to get more. Well, see, these are like these are uncirculated. You know, I don't know the numbers as well as you, but didn't they make like? Billions. Billions. Yeah. And then they recalled them in the early 60s, and they gave you silver for them. Somewhere around here, I have the original shot silver they gave you that you could trade this in for. Huh. And they've all oh, they recalled. Yeah, but they missed a few billion. You know. Now, these are unks. These ones feel great. Star these, note, too? These are unks. I don't think they're star notes. There's now, a star these, note, right? Yeah, that's a star note. But I don't, I don't think this is a solid pack of star notes. Oh, I see. Just happen to see the one on top. There's a few star notes in here. But these are unks. Now, yeah, I could see a pack of these going for 6 or $7 a piece. Because they're crisp. Because they're uncirculated. They're cool. Yeah, I got like three fifty dollars on these. That is but awesome. that, that also goes for these. Sometimes you'll go there and you'll see a number on something um, that's just, you know, just boggles your mind. These are not worth $20 a piece. They just that's just too much now these are red seal but these are red seal um, too. they still make two dollar bills today right yeah even here in 2022 here's a solid pack consecutive order of unks they're pretty i put the i got this at the bank monday yesterday because yeah, the they're bank. just sitting there they're no just problem. sitting there now these have value if you look at some of the articles in the paper they'll sell this usually sells for about 300 but it's kind of cool and i said yeah i'll take it now here's the Red Seal fives, and these are just early. These are thirty-eight pieces, nineteen fifty-eight, ten-dollar bills. Now, if I brought you a three-dollar bill, what could I get for it? Uh, the three-dollar bills are pretty common. The four-dollar right. bill is the hard one. It's mostly broken bank money. The Confederate threes are expensive, hundred-dollar range, but the four-dollar bills, 
are really cool and they're more money than three dollar bills okay i've had them i've actually got a couple of my own my wife bought me a four dollar bill once um but you you know all of this is available the only thing i say is i'll walk by and i'll look at price in there there was a hawaiian i think it was a hawaiian five dollar bill and the guy wanted a hundred dollars wow it's that's a bit a bit steep that's steep. Or even a Hawaiian one dollar bill for seventy five. That's that's at least twice what I would sell it for. But then again, certain areas that you go through, they're not there to be competitive. They know that their people are coming and going, they're on vacation. And they ain't coming back with it. You know, it's a place where you can go and get a, you're selling the Silver Eagle for thirty five dollars because the people don't know any better. So coin guy, I think and correct me if I'm wrong, you are the guy, so you're the one that's gonna make this final determination decision if I'm, if I'm right here. But it seems like what we're talking about here is collect what you like as a strategy. Absolutely, what you love. Yeah, you find something that, that pleases your eye, it makes sense to you, start there. And you can have the best of both worlds if you like silver dollars and you collect by date and then you have a bunch of more generic ones I mean, these, all of this came from that collection the other day, yesterday. These are just the leftovers. These are the ones that ran between very good and very fine. And they're, I mean, you know, it, it, you can collect silver dollars, own them, and still have a hoard of silver yeah. that is always going to be redeemable, or you can trade it for something. Call, call me a new collector, and I'm not necessarily an old collector by any means, but... I love collecting just massive amounts of things rather mm -hmm. than just like mm -hmm. one thing. But I would like to have that just one thing that's super valuable and cool too, you know. I'm How about this? Leave them all over the place. Well, well that's funny. Piece of paper money for you. That doesn't even make sense. Thousand dollars. Well, tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a thousand bucks for it. No, that sounds like a deal. Is yeah, is it? You can more than double that. They just you just don't see them that often. I remember buying them for a thousand fifty, eleven fifty, and selling them for twelve fifty. Is that Grover on the front? I believe it is Grover Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, that's old Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. I've been to the Mint when they had a display at the uh, at the show for the uh, the A and A convention, uh -huh. and they had a canceled sheet of hundred thousand dollar bills. Wow. Which was used between banks. Woodrow Wilson's on a hundred thousand dollar bill, and uh, you know, thirty-two piece sheet. That's like three point two million dollars. You know, we have more money in the United States right now than ever before, right? I mean, like inflation's going crazy. There's just money being printed all the time. But when are we going to see a hundred thousand dollar bill? I'm afraid. I hope never. But you're saying we have a lot of money. What is it? What is the statistic? Seventy percent of all the hundreds are not in the country. Where are they? They're out, they're out, in the, out all over the world. The pallets that we sent to buy off the Iranians, the drug dealers of South America. It's all, like 70% of all hundreds are not in the United States. Well, that explains why I go to the bank, the ATM, and I try yeah. to get hundreds and they shoot me out a bunch of 20s. Yeah. That's a pain when you have like 15 20s. I've had people telling me when they go to the bank and they try to get three to 5,000, they tell people you gotta wait. Yeah. Or I have had one, I had one person in here telling me that they threw them out of the bank. Not threw them out of the bank. They they talked about anti laundering. Yep. And just because you have money in the bank, well, or my, you handle money. My bank. I mean, of course, it's the money in my account, and I know the bank is you know using your money. I get that, right? It's technically their huh. money. Whatever the case may be. Listen, but I mean, you know, when I want it, supposedly I can get it back. But I've gone in there, right? I'm signing the paper, you know, saying that you know nobody's holding me against my will to take out my money. And then they go like, well, you can take only this much out a day, and then you can come back tomorrow or maybe next week and get some more, or give us a you know some advance notice and we can get you more money. It's like, don't you love that? Well, it's it's it stinks because what if you really need your money right now? Oh, I get that. Well, I get the people who, you know, when they look around, what's going on in the world? You got flood and famine and everything else, and you get fearful. And I want to take my six thousand dollars out of it, but you can't do that. Yeah. And there's certain banks that are really in the pocket of the government, and they're not going. And right away, they're going to report you. They start throwing words around like anti-laundering and stuff. I mean, it's my money. Why I inherited money, or I sold a house, and I get that often now. Somebody has sold a piece of real estate, and they got lucky because they got rid of it at the right time. And I want to put a percentage of that. Suppose I want to put 10% of that or $30,000 in gold and silver. Why can't they? 
Why not? Why do they need permission of the government to do that? I don't understand it. And that's, you know, that's what makes me shake my head. That's that overreaching government. I mean, that's, you know, what you're going to see, and I'm afraid you're going to see more of it. All right. Uh, uh, so we talked about coin collecting strategy. We also kind of dabbled into silver and gold a little bit. Let's, you know, for anybody who's still watching, let's go bonus time right now, right? This is extra. Let's talk about silver and gold or precious metals strategy. Is there a strategy behind collecting and, and storing? Storing becomes a problem because where are you going to feel safe with your stuff? How big a safe are you going to have? Are you putting a safe in the ground? You can take a chance. You, well, most people have to put their valuables in a safe deposit box. But you have, you have these laws in place where Homeland Security can confiscate everything in your safe deposit box that isn't your will and testament. That's a fact. You're not allowed. You're not supposed to be able to put cash, coins, jewelry in a safe deposit box. Where else are you going to put it? Where do you think all those people that have those 10 by 10 boxes are in there? How big is their will? Right. I mean, you you know, it, it's wrong. It's, re it's really wrong that you can't have the peace of mind to protect stuff you have because it's a different form. It's just a different form of finance or security because you want to diversify. Um, well, the two big ones, all right? Silver and gold, those are the two big precious metals, right? The I people collect them. Well, but platinum is taking a shellacking. You have some silver and gold right here. Can we show people the difference between a one ounce gold, one ounce silver that may be new to this? Uh, sorry for people that are more advanced and they already know this stuff, but I want to show people one ounce Famous of gold, one gold. ounce of silver. One ounce of gold. And then we'll talk about the price of these right here. Mm -hmm. Here's an ounce of silver. So Why am I showing the queen? One oh, and one. Okay. <laughs> Ounce of gold, okay. ounce of silver. Yep. Very similar. Gold maybe like a little bit smaller in size as far as ounce goes. It's a little bit more dense, right? Of a metal. Now here's some more maples. Okay, you take all these maples. Okay, that's, there's 46 here. I'm selling them for 25 bucks each. You got 46 times 25, 1150. This coin sells for like 1870, 1775. This coin is still going to be about six hundred dollars more. I need another roll of twenty-five of these. One thousand seven hundred seventy-five dollars for one ounce. Mm -hmm. Today Vers versus twenty-five dollars you're selling it for. Twenty-five, which each. is including your premium that you put Everything, on it. That's okay, it. twenty-five each. That's a big difference. But also, what you have is a point where, let's take the money and run. Am I going to take? 35 tubes of this or 10 gold coins. Well, I hear the bombs falling. I hear the market's going to crash. There's a storm, a Category 5 tornado coming in. What am I going to grab to hit the road first? Yeah. You only That's, got so much pocket that has space. To be, that has to be a concern. Uh, <coughs> practicality. Right. So that could be a strategy. You know, what are you feeling comfortable with, like, you know, grabbing real quick and, and leaving with? Yeah, absolutely. Now, but people are still buying. I mean, you know, I really believe all children should, you know, I put away gold and silver for my grandkids. I have for years. Now, silver and gold, there's going to be a little bit of a belief system there when it comes to what they think is going to be more valuable in the future. But let's, let's throw out a question, you know, strategy wise, what has the highest potential to double in the next, let's say 10 years? I keep saying silver because of ratio of 87 or 90 to one. I still think silver has more room. And I really believe it is tremendously being manipulated. I really believe it's manipulated. It's like, it's, you know, when you see the talking heads on TV, I see Bitcoin went up $2,000. It's gone up 10% in the last couple of days. May have lost 1000 bucks today, I don't know. But what people don't realize is a percentage of those banks are closed. You can't, you can't sell your Bitcoin. Or you can't cash out your account. So a lot of these banks, a lot of these Bitcoins are dormant and they can't get out. And you only can go up because people don't realize they can't get out. So there are new people coming in saying, hey, that stayed steady for so long. Let me buy some more. I think it's all a fallacy. You know, I think it's just like when you look at the more. I, I knew before my wife moved around some stocks. She bought stock. I said, this whole thing is smoke and mirrors. 
It's just like a certain party telling you how they got momentum right now. Wait till November. I think it's going to be a slaughter. You can put on all that you want. I think when you look at what's going out there, people are disgusted. People are afraid. I mean, you, you're telling me that the price of eggs has gone up 12, 12%? I'm paying twice as much for a dozen eggs now as I did a year ago. Look at the price of honey. <laughs> <laughs> that, that honey's freaking you out still. Well, you know, I look at it and it's insignificant. But now you're talking about the price of grain. They're worried about China. And, you know, what's happened is China has cities that have shut down. They're having financial problem. They're having, not unions, because China doesn't work with unions. But they're having, they're having situations where, you know, where they can't get product out. And because of that, the ports are closed. I don't know what's coming. I, I'm really worried. I like the idea when I look at what's going on in the world and a certain underdog is now pushing the enemy out. But these people are desperate and proud. And I think we have to worry about that. Yeah. All right. So listen, we talked about coin collecting strategy. We dabbled a little bit into a bonus of precious metal strategy. And uh, I think the key is to, to buy what you like, buy what you believe in. And, um, you know, just as you can afford it too, right? I mean, don't and have something. Don't bet the bank on it. Exactly. Don't bet the house on it. The house. That's the, you that's know, the line. You want to be able to have something. That old motto I've heard down here, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You know, I, I think everybody should have something. And it's just another form of diversity, whether it's land or coins or stock and get dividends, whatever you have to do. Right. Um, do you think the future of coin collecting is going to be here to stay or it's coming down or what do you think? You know, it's I've seen it go through ups and downs. I remember in the late 90s, the old timers telling me our, our, our hobby is dying. And then they came out with the state quarter program. And that was a great boom to coin collecting. All of a sudden, everybody started collecting them again. Uh, I think the thing that really pushes coins now is the precious metal. As I was saying, in 1980, you had nobody to sell that silver to except for wholesalers. Only wholesalers were buying it. And you would get whatever they would pay. You couldn't shop it around, really. And that's where you had to go. Now you have individuals, many individuals all over the world, putting away gold and silver. So you have much more outlets in a lot. I really am surprised. I, I saw so much of this being melted in 1980, 81. I am surprised at how much 90% is still out there. I really am. Uh, but there's, there's obviously tons of it. Um, you know, like I said, do what you enjoy and, and have fun doing it. And everybody should have some gold and silver. And God bless America. God bless America. Guy, God thank you very America. much. Again, um, appreciate you as always for being on the channel. Uh, I'll have your information down in the description so people Not can check problem. you out. Man, tell them to go check out the playlist that I have on my channel. Which go see the playlist. 50-something videos to check out. 52 now. Huh, Three crazy. million views at least. And maybe, maybe an Emmy Award nomination next year. Emmy Award? What? We'll see. Wouldn't that be nuts? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guy. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.